Good morning and happy Saturday morning to each and every one of you. It is now time for the First Baptist Church of Trenton, Pennsylvania's Thought for the Day. And I am continuing to be excited about this word that's coming directly from Jesus. It is just such a strong and powerful word, and I just praise God for it. But before we get into the meat of the matter, let's always welcome the Holy Spirit's presence on this morning. He certainly is with us, and I am just so, so thankful, so grateful that he decided to spend some time with us and to lead us and guide us on this morning. Um, certainly, I am unable to do anything without the Holy Spirit leading me and giving me the words to speak. And assuredly, my prayer this morning is that he would be pleased and that his will would be done. I thank you all for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have been walking through Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, and we're at the end. Matthew, the seventh chapter, and this group of scriptures ranges from the 24th through the 29th verses. And the heading in, in my Bible, the New Revised Standard Version, says, Hearers and Doers. And we talked about that, I don't know, three, four, five weeks ago, the hearers endures portion. Um, but certainly we are thankful for this heading. And I just wanted to throw that out there and remind you all that we're talking about hearers and doers. Now, as we started this last section of scripture, I mentioned to you all that I was not rushing through it, that we were breaking it down a verse at a time because this word is so, so rich. Now, mind you, I I've heard a gazillion sermons preached about this particular set of scriptures, yet and still I will say that the word of God never grows old. And I'm just thankful for that because God, the Holy Spirit, just continues to give us something new and different. And even if it's not new and not different, which it is every time, it's what we need for this day. So even if we've heard it before, sometimes it resonates difference in, differently in our spirits because of where we are in life and what we're going through. I'm assured that the last time I heard these set of scriptures, I was not a widow. Um, and so certainly my perspective has changed. And, and I just use me as an example because it's just an easy, quick example. Um, but I'm sure each of us can point to um, the last time that they can recall uh, hearing a message on these scriptures and how different their lives were then up until now. Um, some may not even be able to go out to worship every week anymore, um, that they're homebound in some sort of way. Or maybe you've switched churches churches or maybe the pastor has switched or I mean lots of things can be different your job your home situation your children lots could have changed since the last time we heard this message and that's going to affect the way that we view the scripture when we hear it this time so let me just read uh, Matthew 7, verse 26. We've already done 24 and 25. We're on 26 this morning. And it reads, And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. Let me just repeat that. And everyone who who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. Amen for the reading of God's word. Now, the, one of the first things that jumps out to me when I hear the this particular scripture being read is that, of course, as we know, Jesus is talking, but he said, these words of mine, if you don't listen to these words of mine, and I just praise God for that because you all, if we don't at listen to, let's start there, listen to God's word, we are putting ourselves in a terrible spot. 
in a terrible spot. And, and we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, um, the difference between uh, hearing and listening. And so certainly when we are in the presence of God's word, whether it's through reading it ourselves or hearing it read um, in a worship service, hearing it uh, read and taught uh, in a Bible class situation or even in uh, sermonic messages, we have to understand that yes, first we hear. Our ears pick up the tones. We're able to decipher and understand the words that are being uttered or being spoken. But we also need to listen, meaning that we not only uh, interpret the words, but that we listen to the point of being able to understand with some depth what's being said, not just make out the auditory words that we hear, the sounds that we hear, but also to be able to really gain an in-depth understanding of the word. I would even go as far as is calling it wisdom, um, but certainly where we would come to understand what the word of God is saying. I get it that it's not always easy. Uh, it's not always easy for me. I, I praise God for formal training and um, being exposed to the seminary and, um, and, and other secondary resources to help me in gaining an understanding. But I said to a friend just the other day, I think that we're all going to get to heaven and be surprised that of how much of it we got wrong. Because we are doing the best we can with our human, with our finite minds, to be able to interpret something that's infinite, um, something that is, is just so far over our heads that there's no way for us to fully understand it. And, and I try to keep that in mind as I read, as I study, as I craft sermons um, at, at the behest of the Holy Spirit that I'm doing the best I can to get it right. Um, and so please, ladies and gentlemen, be patient with any teacher, any preacher, any pastor, um, with yourselves, because we're all just trying to get it right. And that's how come I am a firm believer in not arguing and debating God's word with people and the interpretation of God's word. The only thing I will battle about is Jesus as Messiah. That's something that I'll take a stand on every day, 24-7. Uh, but I do not get into those kinds of in-depth um, arguments. Really, it's nothing else to call it. Um, with others over the interpretation of God's word. We're all just trying to get it right. And so we're hearing and we're listening. We're digesting and accepting this word. But the problem comes in is that even those who hear and then ultimately listen, we don't always apply God's word to our lives. I just don't understand it. Um, why listen, hear and listen if we aren't going to do? Um, that's like being in Buffalo this weekend and hearing that they're going to get 60 inches of snow and still going outside and driving to and from. I mean, it makes no sense to hear it, to understand it, and then not follow the warnings to stay inside. You all, I know that's easier said than done. And, and you all know I'm a realist and I get it, that it is not always easy to hear, to listen, and to do. But we need to work towards that, you all. We need to work towards that. We need to apply God's word in our lives because if we don't, we will be just who Jesus describes in this 26th verse this morning. He said, this is gonna be the foolish man the foolish woman. Yes, we are silly. We are unwise. We are absurd in our actions and words and deeds. If we hear, listen, and don't do, it just doesn't make sense. And then he gave us a comparison and, and I'm closing. 
he said that we would be foolish and it's like we're building our houses on land. You've heard me say before that the house in this scripture is akin to our lives. So we're uh, in this particular scripture text is akin to our lives. So we're building our lives on sand. Something that's so weak and structurally unsound. Something that will give in when you step on it. It gives way. You can see the footprints as we walk across a sandy beach. And boy, do we need a sandy beach right now. Um, but as we walk across it, you see your footprints because there's an uh, the weight that we carry pushes down the sand wherever we step. I mean, it makes no sense at all. It is truly foolish to build our lives on something that can't even sustain us, can't even hold our weight, that will give way whenever we lay anything upon it. It just doesn't make sense, you all. And so I say, because we're going to get more into this and, and head into a close next week, but I just praise God this morning for this word. Now, let me leave you with our thought for the day. Hearing listening, applying, hearing, listening, doing. Our thought for the day, actions speak louder than words. Now, I know that's rather cliche, and I've probably used it before and will probably use it again as our thought for the day. But actions truly do speak louder than words. We can hear it, we can listen to it, but if we don't do it, it tells the true um, place of our hearts. It shows where we are spiritually. It shows um, in our everyday life and living whether we are truly, truly following what Jesus has said for us to follow. So yeah, our actions, you could say all day long that you do what, what God says do, but our actions speak louder than words. I have to let you go. I've been long this morning. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for Jesus and his love for us, his willingness to give us some guidance on how we should live in this life. Our prayer, Heavenly Father, is that we would hear listen and do all that your word entails, all that Jesus spoke to us, all that Jesus taught us, that we absolutely would hear, listen, and apply. And Heavenly Father, that our actions, Lord Jesus, would speak louder than our words, that we would build our lives on Jesus, the strong foundation that we will be, he, be able to withstand the weight of life. Lord, we just bless you and we praise your name on this morning. And our prayer, our prayer, Heavenly Father, is truly that our actions would speak louder than our words. In the precious name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen.